How do you get it to uh, expand? Welcome, everyone. Um, hello, Internet. This is the September 1st uh, IPython Jupyter uh, dev meeting, and uh, it's getting busier and busier by the day. Um, so let's get started. Uh, Matthias had uh, pre-populated uh, some of the uh, hackpad already. So uh, Matthias, you had put your name uh, up on top, so why don't you go ahead? OK, sure. Um, so um, most of last week was complaining about, do you still hear me? Yes, OK, sure. Um, complaining about a PR that was merged that I thought was not OK for 4.1. That's been reverting since then. It was a lot of discussion. I might have been a little bit too uh, violent on that, and I'm sorry. Uh, I went to EuroSciPy. Uh, I can maybe try to turn on my video when I'm talking. Um, so a lot of great things. First thing is EuroSciPy grew by uh, around 50%, according to um, uh, to many people, which like suddenly felt a lot different than, than last year. Um, we had a lot of new people from some people who were actually doing Python for only 24 hours. And unlike uh, SciPy, uh, we don't we didn't have a lot of talk in Python 3. Like most of the things are Python 2, and might get ported to Python 3. I was a bit a bit uh, sad about that. Um, the Jupyter IPython uh, split is mostly well understood. Like there is no more like what is Jupyter? Is it just why are you rewriting everything? People try to uh, start in understanding that Jupyter is just an agnostic part of, of IPython. Uh, there is still this thing that says that Jupyter is IPython, but language agnostic. Um, but but it's, it's roughly OK. Um, still, people are a bit complaining of migration to 4.0 is a bit, um, a bit, a bit difficult. Uh, there is two nice talk about integration with widget-like framework. Um, the first one is something that reinvent mostly what the widget are, um, maybe in a better API. But a lot of what they said um, made me think that some of the widget goals are not well communicated, like that widgets are reusable and are meant to create UI so maybe you have to think and, and, and thought about that a bit more. And all of you that we had uh, at, um, at SciPy. Mm -hmm. um, I will probably skip a bit on, on all, all, all the complaints and feedback I had from people on 4.0 and the notebook in general. Um, I heard a lot more negative feedback because I pushed people to complain uh, I, I know that some people didn't knew I was a core developer, so I asked them, and they had like really, really negative feedback, and they uh, they said negative things, uh, which I think we can address in some area, and we have to communicate more on others. Uh, I've had a not exhaustive list of what has been said, but uh, you should, but you, you can... should, but you should write, you should write all of that down in detail while it's fresh in your mind. I mean. There's... Yeah, but it's it's really difficult to write that when people are talking with you just in front of you because otherwise it starts to yeah. become suspicious and and often um, many people were French so we were actually speaking in French and the translation process you lo you lose most of um, what is said maybe I can t I can get a, a microphone next time and don't no, but write, exactly try to write yeah, it before right. try to write it down before you forget it is what I'm saying before you forget it too much. Yes, yes, yes. So that's why I've, I've written most of it here. Um, so I don't know, do you want me to go through what I've written or? I mean, it, it might make for too long of a discussion right now if we go into too much detail, but it's the kind of thing that what I would like to do is, is, uh, is to set up a time where you actually expand this in more detail and we take sure. the time to to break this down into actionable items that we where, sure. where we actually go into detail into these things because having having in depth critical feedback is very is very valuable right um, and right now if we go into this it'll take it'll take a half hour but but taking the time for you to break this down and put in the detail that you remember would be very useful. 
Okay, great. Uh, so, like, directly jump to the fact that uh, Damian Rai's presentation, like live notebook, was used a lot during talks. Uh, many talks were actually starting full screen presentation, and at some point, oh, uh, sorry, I made a mistake here and double click, and it was actually a notebook, uh, which was really nice. Um, since people are still switching back and forth between slides, even uh, Rise and normal notebook to do demo, and they are more and more thinking about switching the header and toolbar, but they take often a lot of time to switch. So I think at a better switch for presentation mode would be would be would be would be really really good. And a lot of speakers were from Continuum, which was a, a huge surprise. A lot of um, uh, things you were hearing. Uh, after conferences, are like, like ah, they are also from Continuum, they are also working from Continuum. Um, so yeah, it was more, maybe even a higher percentage than at, at SciPy. Uh, I discussed a bit with people to find, uh, to know if they are interested in postdocs. Uh, I had one person who might be interesting, um, we just won't say the name here, just not to uh, to other people, but if you ask me directly, I can tell you who. Um, but otherwise, people I ask also for for managers and everything. Um, people are trying to recruit mostly the same kind of of people than we are, so it's 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 difficult. And next year, EuroSciPy is in uh, Germany, um, so we'll see how many people we have there. You can already subscribe to, uh, to the mailing list if you want. I don't have the link here. I have to find it back. Um, and yeah, so changing subject, not EuroSciPy anymore. Uh, I'm trying to recap, uh, starting today, every week, uh, what happened in the Jupyter uh, organization and Jupyter world, like new project, like Binder and everything. I want to add something that is relatively short and that can be only read weekly to know what happens to in increase our communication towards um, everyone on the mailing list so that you don't have to follow every day and basically skim through hundreds of emails to know what's happening. I would appreciate um, help. If you just want push uh, push access to the repo, just ask me, I will add you. I just want that to be quick, uh, not preview PR, and just reread at the end of the week, and I will post that either on the blog or on my blog or on the mailing list. I haven't decided yet. Uh, just a way to, like, every, every time I see something which is important, I want to put a line in here and clean up everything at the end of um, uh, of the week. Uh, one subject I would like to discuss later, if you agree, is to update docs of older version of IPython, because people are putting a lot of links to older version because they are better referenced by Google. Uh, I so, agree with that. Yes, yes we have, we have like, some changing so, the URL just to get to it. Yeah, sometimes we have 0.102, which is the first result. Uh, yeah. And it's really difficult, even with good, uh, good search in Google, to have something else at the top. Um, so I think we should work on that to improve our communication again, uh, have a huge message with say, this is old, new version on read the doc, maybe even find a way to get old version on read the doc so that you can switch version on read the doc, which will do the redirect and uh, Google, hey, don't follow that automatically. Completely. Uh, so, uh, there are a lot of projects that do this and the header bar almost always shows, uh, you're currently viewing the old version of the docs, click here to view the current version. We yeah, should yeah, just rip whatever they're completely. doing. Unquestionably agreed. Yeah, but it's it's not it's not obvious to do so because you have to get back to how the code was working three years ago. So yeah, if you can just just put some some man hours on that, it would be great. And I just discovered, I mean, this this was one month and a half ago uh, that uh, IDL is shipping with IPython Jupyter kernel by default directly inside. So wow, we're the munition monster of time. Wow. <laughs> What is that exactly? Uh, oh, but ID basically, IDL is a is a programming language that was uh, started um, at the University of Colorado in 1977 
in, a, in the astronomy world, and it's kind of the moral equivalent of MATLAB, was less successful in the marketplace, but is very similar to MATLAB, and was very, it's still very widely used in, a, in the astronomy and astrophysics world, also in earth sciences and image processing. And the fact, the fact that I actually started IPython in order to get away from IDL. IDL was, was what I was using in my PhD to do my data analysis when I was in Colorado because it was very, it was very widely used at CU Boulder because it was born at CU Boulder in the, in the astronomy department. And, uh, and the fact that Not it's... coming back to you. <laughs> yes. And uh, actually, just yesterday, I was looking up the company, this company that makes it. It's now called Excellus. It used to be called Research Systems. The company headquarters are still in Boulder. Uh, and and uh, it's a small company. And uh, the fact that they're shipping a default kernel officially is very funny. And it's installed with Conda. So indeed, Continuum, the, the, the install instructions are Conda update... Conda, Conda, update iPython. It's officially a Conda install. Continuum is indeed taking over the world. What, what were you saying, Brian? Fantastic. That, that's uh, pretty incredible. <laughs> yes, it is. It really is. It's amazing. <sighs> okay. Uh, my quick report. Uh, I had a fantastic time working with Jess uh, on, uh, uh, on writing the uh, NB Grader paper, which uh, was submitted last week. Uh, we had a we had a wonderful time working together on that manuscript, uh, and uh, I've been working on a large grant report. Uh, I have a, the the Simons Foundation supported some of the work uh, uh, on um, some of my work for the last uh, two years, and that grant closes uh, this week. Uh, and so I have to write a final grant report, and those things are very time consuming. So I've been I've been working on that. That's less fun. Writing a grant report is a lot less fun than writing a paper, but still has to be done. Thomas, yeah, Thomas just moved to moved to the UK is in, in on holiday with his family. So Stephen next. Not here. Let's go to the next person. Brian, do you want to take the microphone? Sure. So uh, this last week, uh, I've been doing uh, quite a bit of organizational work. Uh, we had a discussion uh, as a steering council about moving our governance document uh, to a new governance repo and then using pull requests to evolve that governance document and uh, there was pretty much unanimous support for that. And, and uh, based on that, I'll, I'll be moving our governance documents over to a new repo uh, here in the next day or so. Uh, also some discussions uh, about uh, how we approach communication as a project uh, based on, on various conversations. It seems like we're still uh, sort of talking, we're not synchronizing communications effectively so various people are working on things uh, and other people in the project are unaware of those. And so there's been discussions about uh, how we, uh, we, we have a possible delivery coming, sorry. Um, so discussions about how we wanna do uh, project-wide communication. Um, no, no conclusions on that yet. Uh, also a lot of work on hiring. Uh, we're gonna be hiring a student uh, admin slash communications uh, type person here at Cal Poly, uh, Matias. I, I think I, I would love one of the uh, jobs of that person to help out uh, producing the newsletter. And so uh, it would be great to, to hook you up with that person once they're hired. Um, and then there's also the, the full-time position, software engineering designer and a full-time admin person as well. Uh, the big news is we uh, launched the new uh, Jupyter website uh, just yesterday. Uh, Cameron can talk a little bit more about that. Um, and we, we've been sort of iterating on uh, various issues that have come up as we've launched. Um, and we're also starting to do uh, user testing uh, usertesting.com is a, one of the big uh, user testing 
uh, sites, and they've given us uh, qu quite a few free uh, tests. And we're going to start to run that, but I can also give uh, anyone else in the project some of those free tests if there's things uh, that you want to user test. Uh, yesterday, we posted uh, a, a free user test that they automatically do where, where we, we weren't involved in terms of writing the questions. I posted that yesterday to the Gitter channel, but even that showed some really interesting things that honestly we never would have thought of otherwise. Um, <laughs> things like uh, for this particular user, uh, docs mean meant documents, not documentation. <laughs> you know, I think for some audiences, we all know, yes, docs means documentation, but for some audiences, docs does not mean documentation. And so simple renaming like that, I think can improve the uh, usability. Uh, another big thing that came up is that uh, because of our documentation is a separate website, once people follow the link over to the documentation website on Read the Docs, their expectation seems to be that if they click on the header of that website, it should take them back to the main Jupyter website, and it doesn't. It just takes them back to the main part of the documentation. And this will be compounded in that every time someone navigates between a different Read the Docs site of ours, that header link will not take them back to the main Jupyter Docs anymore. It will only take them to the, to the main page of whatever Read the Docs repo they're currently looking at. And that, that's a severe breakage of, of the basic expectations of web navigation that I think we have to think about in a, in a serious way. Um, I've also been starting to work uh, on a trip. I will be in New York uh, for the month of October. And I'm talking with various people uh, involved in the project uh, about uh, working together, running community, community events in New York, sprints, hackathons, uh, uh, giving talks to people uh, who would like that. And if there's anyone in the broader community who's interested in meeting or working with us uh, in October in New York, please let me know. And I think that's it. We uh, keep going here, Cal Poly. Fine. Uh, so yeah, I've been working on spreadsheets still. Uh, so I guess what I'm still doing is I need to merge with what John was working on, which was packaging some of the notebook for NPM, I think it was. So I can use that to grab the keyboard manager. Other than that, I'm going to take advantage of what Chris finally posted his widget class so I can update my POSPR, use the new widget class, and otherwise that's just about it. Um, for this week, of course, the website went live, so that was pretty cool. And then, um, as Brian was saying, the testing is going to be pretty much this week, and just seeing how people are using the website, checking out the Google Analytics that we planted on the page to see if people are getting to the bottom of the page, if they're getting the information, if they can get to the install the notebook button, because that's very important. Um, seeing how that still translates over to the mobile site. Um, we've been getting some requests from other companies about the logos that are being on the site. And I helped out with Brian to find some potential candidates for the administration position here at Cal Poly. And one, there was one more thing that I listed in the hack pad, which was I'm going to start kind of looking at the IPython site and seeing of doing something to make it kind of match the Jupyter site, but not as extensive as in being such long pages, um, kind of basically being a redirector page to the Jupyter site so they have some insight into like what kind of happened and some background. But that's pretty much this week, and that's kind of my forecast for next week. Just one quick question. Do you have analytics on the time it takes for the page to load? Or um, yeah, like so it takes uh, 1.8 seconds with all those SVDs, so it's pretty good. Okay. I, I tested can... it on a site load test, but if you have anything against that. Yeah, but you have, do you have like continuous tracking on how long it takes on different user browsers and everything? Um, I, I, I can look into that in the Google Analytics, see if there's anything on that. If not, I can get that up and running anyway. So. Okay, thank you.
So uh, I've been continuing to work on the Python and Yarn. Um, I've made a lot of good progress with that. Uh, I've been working with Ben at Continuum, um, and that's going really well. I did a major refactor of that, and working with that's going to be a lot easier now. Um, and we're very close to the point where we can start putting in the IPython parallel specifics of it um, and actually trying to see if we can get IPython parallel on a yarn cluster soon. Um, so that's going well. Uh, I'm also still waiting on the PR that I submitted to uh, PySpark um, to make it pip installable. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the kind of processes with their whole community of how long they expect to let PRs just kind of sit there because there was a good amount of uh, discussion on that, but it just kind of died out and doesn't look like any core developers have uh, come in to look at that. So maybe I'll kind of look into uh, what I can expect on the timeline for that and if there's anything that I can do to expedite that. And I think that does for Cal Poly. Cal Poly out. <laughs> you can expedite it by shipping it. Just put up a package on PyPI and say, this is how it works. Um, do someone fill in with me? I can do it. So, Min had his first official day at Similar today. And he's currently in the plane doing PRs and fixing things. Uh, he will uh, land in or say soon, uh, and he has um, a meeting with open group people tomorrow, from, from tomorrow to um, Sunday. Um, Chris and Steven can catch up with, uh, can tell later how they chat on API. And here it is Jupyter Console 402 with entry points that works on Windows. So yeah, we have to put it on Windows now. Um, and he's working on a tool to manipulate the kernel spec to not edit the JSON file by hand so that you can say, hey, kernel spec, add this profile for IPython kernel, or add this environment variable for this kernel, or probably rename this kernel to something else. And I think that's about it. And the next person is Nicolas, if you're online. Nick? <clears throat> Nick Balweg? Okay. He said sorry, still figuring no. out new schedule, so that might mean he's not he's not around. Uh Nick? We can talk about it too since I also triggered the NBR deployment. Um yeah, so NBR now uses Jupyter. Uh we went ahead and merged that. Uh, and actually shipped it. It looks like Nick's in the hack pad. Uh, and then Nick is trying to go ahead and retheme uh, Ambiguer to uh, Jupiter. And so there's a current PR for that. Um, I think it's number 494. Yeah. Oh, and he has a link there. So, uh, and, and it looks, and he wants to start going after um, an enhancement proposal for reproducible environments. And so this is kind of a spec for. Uh, the notebook itself uh, having some amount of information in there. And so this kind of combines into things that Peter uh, and Andrew uh, Osheroff and Jeremy Freeman and others are all kind of like working towards. So, yeah. Okay. Um, Damien, are you, do you have audio, Damien? Do you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, oh, great. Well, good good great. to hear you. Yeah, yeah. Now, now it's working. Yeah. Well, uh, no, no much to add. Essentially, I was answering some 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 issues related with the, the slide, uh, more in general in NB Convert, uh, trying to follow NB Convert, NB Viewer, and Notebook, because there are a lot of issues out there. Um, trying to catch up with the email threads in this comes in, uh, in general. Just just that for us this week. Okay. Chris? Right, so I'm gonna cover uh, Steve's update as well. Uh, he has unfortunately has a, a not feeling well, so he stepped out of the meeting. Um, so Steve uh, spent part of the week helping me um, with pushing out some of the Phosphor repos, Phosphor uh, JS repos that are now at version 1.0. Um, so the ones that are at 1.0, uh, 
uh, have full full test coverage. Um, all of them are effectively at 100% coverage. Uh, there's a few lines of automatically generated TypeScript code that is not relevant for us that doesn't get coverage, but that's fine. Um, so, um, so those are all effectively covered. Um, he also did. Um, let me see here. Scroll back up here. So right. So he worked with. Um, He's been working on the Jupyter Services API quite a bit. Um, we took a step back from that uh, and had some conversations with Min about what we can do to clean up that API. There's quite a bit of conflation surrounding um, lifecycle management of the kernel um, and how that should be handled with respect to um, WebSocket messages versus REST API communication. And just in general, that was a bit of a conflation that was hard to follow. So we're kind of going back and working, work, reworking that to make it easier to follow and easier for new developers who look at the code to actually understand what's going on. Um, so that general cleanup uh, is in progress. Um, he's working on that now. Um, so for me, my last week was spent um, releasing the making, the, so the repos that last week were at 0.9 versions and Phosphor are now at 1.0 versions. Uh, and so those are all fully published and you know, with 1.0 carries all the guarantees of backwards compatibility. So people are free to use those. Those are now fully production ready libraries. Um, the Phosphor widget repo, which is now the, uh, which we're proposing as the uh, Common interchange format, if you will, for dealing with uh, dealing with having node having content in the node. Um, that that base class is now published at version 0.9. Um, it's there's also a I put in the hackpad a link to an issue for anybody that wants to make comments on the API or requests have suggestions or requests to go in before it reaches 1.0. That is available. Uh, we've also stood up a uh, simple int, uh, temporary homepage at phosphorjs github.io which is also linked on the hackpad. Uh, so for those of you that want a short and quick explanation of what Phosphor is, what it's trying to do, what it's providing, and how it will play along with all of the other things that you want to do, um, you can read that explanation that is now live. Um, so that's up and available. Uh, this week will be, uh, I hope to, you know, unless anybody has uh, some suggestions that require lots of reworking of the base Phosphor widget class, which I don't think that there will be uh, that, Class will be released as uh, version 1.0 this week, uh, and the next repos that are on the docket are all the various layout panels and the menu systems and those sorts of things. So, so that uh, Chris, just off the top of my head, one one question that I think it might be useful to to answer in that page, just because I suspect it's it's the obvious question that it's sort of the elephant in the room that people coming to a page. I think it's fantastic that you've put this page up. It's it's super useful, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that, that you put it up. Uh, I would suggest adding somewhere in either in the, in the why, in the why or in the what section of the page, um, something about where uh, parts of a project that use, uh, that use React or people who come from a React uh, type workflow, how would, what does Phosphor bring to them or what would they do with it? Because I think the obvious question that a lot of people are going to have is I have a bunch of, I'm using React in my project what does this thing do for me or how how does it play with react just because react is the big elephant in the room i think mm -hmm. i think saying something about it i think you should say something about it right yeah, how, sure. how, how how does it play in the ecosystem rather rather than not saying any anything about it because somebody is going to hit control find and just say like search the word react and if they don't find the word react in it they're going to say well i don't know what this does i'm going to move on and so, yeah, and so I, that's I think all, it's that's all in the long-term plan for that for that page. Uh, so this this page is just a very quick temporary thing that we stood up uh, to okay. give some information, um, particularly for this meeting, so that you know as more and more people are joining this meeting and a lot of them have the same question, we wanted to have something that was up and available to at least handle that in the in the short interim term. Um, so the long-term plan that will actually uh, that that main page will actually be like a real nice main page. Uh, so as you know, we'll. That it will be developed further with more content and examples and and, and address all of those concerns. So yeah, so we, we agree with that. Um, in the meantime, uh, the, the content that is there, I believe, does make a good case for the things that Phosphor provides, which anybody that knows React will realize. Oh yeah, React doesn't provide these things. So uh, okay. so it's not it's not a leap of faith to make you know, to to make that that connection. Uh, it will be made abundantly clear uh, in the future with, uh, with with strong examples. That's it's just one of those all in due time uh, things for now. Got it. Got it. Good. So that's it on my end. Great. No, but I'm I'm very grateful. Thank you. Uh, I, I really need for that. 
for, for the Y React, there is an issue to track it now. Yep. So um, just following on from Chris's one, I've been um, I've been starting working on the commands for Phosphor. So basically, like auto menu generation, um, plug based menu generation, that kind of thing. A um, little bit of it's reliant on uh, Chris's last item, which is um, updating the menu bar and, uh, and and widgets for that. Um, but but largely, it's uh, it, it's not blocked at the moment, and uh, should have a should have a nice demo in the next day or two. That's it. Can you remind me of which repo it is? Sorry? Where where is where are you doing that? Is it in your Jupyter or Phosphor repo? Uh, no, I'm doing that in a in a private repo at the moment because Chris is moving everything to 1.0. Uh, we didn't want some code that's not uh, not 1.0 and not uh, not production ready going into Phosphor. Um, we can we can send you a link if you want to take a look when uh, when there's a workable demo. And you have much better audio today, David. <laughs> Thanks. OK, anything else? Jess, I think you're up next. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, as Fernando mentioned, um, last week I spent a lot of time working on the paper with him. Um, I've also been doing a bit of improvements for MBGrader. Um, I converted the back end for the FormGrader app to use Tornado. So um, I think that's going to make it easier for me to make it a little bit uh, more reliable in the future. Um, also, like in the last week, like a ton of people have left issues and comments on the MBGrader repo, um, which is awesome. Um, it's like more, like I don't know, it's like a you know five or tenfold increase in, in what it's than previously. So I, I think that that's because classes are just about to start and people who are interested in using it are just beginning to use it now. But I'm really excited about that. So I think, um, you know, as people start to use it more and more, it's going to continue to improve because they'll actually find bugs that I'm not aware of. Um, and I also spent a little bit of time. Uh, I got a Windows machine set up and I'm getting Windows working. Um, uh, and um, that's, you know, partially due to Simon did a lot of work on this um, at, at SciPy. Um, and so, like, what he did was really super helpful in, in helping me get a lot of this stuff working, but that's almost ready to go now, so. Cool. Did you see the note by Matthias? That integrator was mentioned at the Euro SciPy keynote. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Um, I think you tweeted about it, right, Matthias? Yes. Cool. Yeah, I, yeah, I think the people, yeah. Say? Uh, they were using uh, SageMite Cloud that also have uh, distribute assignment and collect assignment buttons, and they were interesting in it's interested in um, testing more and be greater for the automatic automated testing part and 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 things like that. Cool, Kyle. Yeah. Oh, unless okay, I didn't mean to cut you oh, off. Right. Oh, no, um, I just had the one question about the CI, but Kyle answered it in a comment. So I'll, I'll talk to people later about that. OK, cool. Um, right, so I, I've started going through uh, drafting an API spec, um, both for Binder and for Temp and B, which is more about kind of <coughs> uh, operational issues that we've run into with the clusters, uh, as well as wanting to have uh, ways of working with those clusters without having to log in and do direct Docker commands. Like we should be able to kind of manage, like what's the, what's the growing pool size? How many, how many users do we currently have? What's the usage like? Um, as well as making sure that we have contexts that work for um, like on-demand launching directly, um, the building and then uh, access from, for example, feed or other contexts. Um, right. So this, this will eventually become an enhancement proposal, and then uh, I'll post that up. I'm, I'm drafting out the Swagger doc for it. Um, and then along the way, during this last week, I've been uh, auditing Binder and kind of Docker and containers in general, because um, before we just assumed that uh, uh, everything would just be, we would just pretend everything was compromised, tear down a node, and bring it up. And so now it's kind of more of a holistic view of how far can you get once you have shell access. 
uh, within the containers. Um, and then starting a discussion with Peter about uh, kernel provisioning uh, slash orchestration and like a gateway for that. Uh, and Peter's gonna talk about that later, so I'll, I'll leave that alone, but we have a hack pad for it. Um, and then on those same lines, Put up the fact that I've really wanted a place to put uh, enhancement proposals together. So as suggested on the list, we would go ahead and create uh, an enhancement proposals um, repo, and then people can go ahead and propose one, and then we can accept those as like a standard. Uh, and this is mostly for things like API coordination, message specs, all of those. So just like IPEPs, except it would be an entire repository for them so that we can version control them. Uh, yeah, I mean, and then- we, We've had we've yeah. had them, We've had them on the wiki as individual wiki pages, and the wiki is version controlled. It's just that it's a it's a pretty lax version control. And so if we if we want to structure it a little bit better, we and what what I would suggest we do then if we're going to do that is we could move over the old stuff that was on the wiki because we do have all of the old IPEPs. I mean, we have yeah. quite a few of them. I would just move them over so that everything is in one place uh, and do a little bit of house cleaning, and we could move. Put links from the old wiki ones. Put redirect links or or just manual pointers to a repo, and then have everything have have them kind of cleanly structured, and have that maybe rendered with GitHub, GitHub pages or something like that, so that they render nicely the way the way peps uh, Python peps render. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, because we could do uh, GitHub pages that just take the the markdown that's available there and render yeah. it like yeah, as yeah. it. Then we apply our own styling. I think. Uh, since there's a lot of them, uh, and we don't know the state of all of them, it seems like whoever the original lead on that the IPAP should probably be the one to push it in, since there's enough of them. So like I, John would bring in the widgets. I, I, if you to want me, to, to keep number, we need to do it one by one in the right order. Yeah, if you want to keep the numbers, because so if we plug into the GitHub tooling right now, it means we can just say that the PR is the enhancement proposal. Like the PR number is the number for that proposal. And the when people are referring to it in inside of repos, they, they just use the number on GitHub. So GitHub does all the management. We don't have to be big. There's not two IDs to think about. Um, and then when you're updating an enhancement proposal, you're basically making a proposal to update that one. I mean, like putting putting the naming on it is almost silly, but I mean, I'm making a pull request to change this original proposal. Which is a proposal in itself. Um, ah, I don't want to go too far. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see. You you're trying to you're trying to use the the PR num auto numbering mechanism to to give you the numbers automatically. Which if we want yeah. grand if we want to grandfather the old numbers, it means you have to move the old ones carefully. Yeah. Which we can't because we have IPEP zero and so it, it could just be about the spec rather than like the number of the spec. It could keep it could keep it probably inside of like the, the folder or whatever, but yeah. Okay. We probably but, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about it. Shouldn't it shouldn't be me. You know that. Yeah. Um hmm. yeah, so working with Sophia, Jeremy, and Andrew. Uh Sophia's been great working across Jupyter Output Area and Temp and V. So it's been it's been really nice to get fresh blood in there. She's gonna talk more about that. Uh, stuff later. Uh, and then MV Viewer is now in a small Docker Swarm cluster instead of CoreOS. Um, yeah. But that's uh, me and Oleg. Yeah, cool. That's it for me. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, Sophia, I think you're up next. Are you still on? Um, sure. Can everyone awesome. hear me? Uh, perfect. Okay, um, perfect. So Kyle and I met last Wednesday and we scoped out a 0.1 release of temp nb so i kind of worked on a couple of pull requests for that um, they're linked in the hack pad um, also i've been making some contributions to a couple of jupyter projects here and there some of them are prs some of them are issues that i haven't submitted work in progress prs against um, i've also been editing guidelines around the new um, enhancement proposal repository if you guys want to comment on that um, I think we've got most of the kinks figured out. It's kind of just up to me at this point to look at everyone's comments and make updates to the documentation. Um, goals for the next two weeks. Um, 
planning on finishing up the API and the visual components for the stats page for temp NB. Um, that release is actually happening tomorrow. Um, so gonna get that done today. Um, also talk to Kyle about writing tests for um, both temp NB and the Jupyter JS output area. Um, finishing up with the Jup the Jup guidelines and just kind of RPHPR. RHPR, random helpful pull requests, is my thing that I do. Um, cool. But yeah, that's what the next two weeks look like for me. And then I think I will be in Cal Poly um, the week of the 14th um, for a super fun college students who do Jupiter party. Excellent. Yep. That should be awesome. Should be great. Fun, both fun and productive. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I reiterate, it's awesome to have you on the project. Uh, we're very, we're thrilled to have you. Thank you. Um, is uh, Will around? Uh, we haven't uh, haven't heard from you. Will, are you on today? No, and he, he's working on research. That's, okay. Yeah. All right, uh, Peter. I think you are right. I'm here. Hi, Peter. Cool. Awesome. So most of last week was spent just learning the ropes, right? Trying to get involved on the mailing list, doing some maintenance in Docker stacks, which we now have, I think, six images total, both for Notebook 321, 4.0, code base, building, pushing to Docker Hub, sort of automatically. We need some time-loving care there to make that a little bit better. Um, just quirks with how Docker Hub works. But people are actually contributing. We've had a couple issues open. We tried to resolve. Actually, someone else contributed a uh, an image, uh, the Docker file, whatnot, so it's good. Um, Kyle and I started talking about, can we rebase the uh, Docker damage, uh, damage, Docker demo image uh, on the uh, minimal notebook in the Docker stacks? For It's the one that runs at tryjupiter.org, so we're not maintaining two separate sets of images. Right? It's going to take a little bit of thinking, but we open that issue start planning what we could do there. Um, there's actually some current issues with building that demo image because of you know versions of packages changing and not everything's pinned. So we'll, we'll see what we can do in that spot. Um, and then Kyle mentioned, you know, we started drafting or noodling on it. We would say it's a draft yet. Uh, this idea of kernel provisioning and a gateway server uh, for a variety of the use cases we're seeing come up, like the dashboard work that we're gonna talk about probably in 10 minutes from now. Um, you know, Kyle's work and community's work on Thebe and uh, just exec, and then also the concept of uh, that we've seen come up before running Jupyter notebooks sort of remote from kernels and talking to remote kernels, which actually gets back to one of Brian's requirements for, uh, you know, not having this combinatoric explosion of different Docker stacks and how can we put kernels and containers by themselves and let the user pick what they want to run against from the notebook server. So. Lots of concepts there. We're trying to write up some use cases in a hack pad right now, and you know we'll submit it as one of the enhancement proposals once it matures a little bit further. So, okay, that's all I've got. Great, um, um, Dan. Um, do you know? Do you have? Do you guys have um, anything else? Uh, Mr. Dan, no, not really. We're, we're basically uh, just prepared to uh, give everybody a. Uh, introduction to our wares in a couple of minutes. So, um, you want to just kind of bridge from there, or? Uh, well, I one thing that I wanted to do was actually was stop the re stop the recording and start a separate one. So I wanted to uh, make sure that uh, do we have anyone else who had anything else to report? Uh, I don't think we've heard from Jason and Sylvan, have we? Uh, I don't have anything to report from today uh, for for today. I was missing the sound of your voice, Jason. <laughs> Ah, oh, there it is. And if we could have a few minute break before we start the IBM thing, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, do we have? Have we left anyone by by uh, inadvertently on the call? Uh, is there anyone who uh, was meant to speak and we have left off by chance? No. Ryan's here. Yeah. Okay, Ryan. Oh. Okay. I don't have that much to report. Um, I the base uh, refactor for a map plot with traitlets. The, the base artist class is basically done now. Um, 
I made some contributions to Traitlets, and I'm working on implementing the new API that, that was brought up by Solon. Um, I, I imagine Jason was probably involved in some of that as well. Uh, some of the new API for Traitlets that was brought up in some new pull, pull requests. And yeah. All right. And this is going into this is going in already into uh, pull requests from Apple Flip, this new API. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I, I haven't committed any of those changes, but ah. but yeah, the new API is planned to go into Matplotlib. Right. Thanks. Um, okay. Do we have anyone else? All right, then uh, I suggest uh, that we wrap up this meeting. I'm going to stop the recording now. Um, thank you, Internet.